We're back on shift inside the ambulance. It's a Sunday morning, man. What the hell? If I'm awake, they're awake. We're with the West Midlands Ambulance Service. Point to me where the pain is. Are you still with me, Hannah? Right. Yeah? As they face more heart-pounding action... Can you feel me touching you? Yes. ..and more medical emergencies. You thought you were going to die? You're going to be fine. Battling over 4,000 calls each day. Can you pop that back on there again, just over the top? Hold that on. We'll have to roll you a little bit one way. Oh. How do you feel at the moment, Petal? Oh. What's that from? There are some new faces. I do think we work well together. We don't make we? a good team. Yeah. Do you think I look like you? Is that what you're saying? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> and some old friends. Bother? Thanks. I don't think you turned on the sausage. <laughs> Don't panic, just move out me way. Body mounted cameras record every moment. Did you bump your nose? Just a key. Come on, man. To show you what goes on behind closed doors. There's <laughs> loads, isn't there? Yeah. Look at that. People knock the NHS, don't they? And I've just wiped your nose twice. You'll be on the front line with the ambulance crew as we take you inside the ambulance. Come hello, high water, we're coming. Would you like me to join you? Uh, yes, please. OK. Flick the mirror out as well. Yeah. Not everything you do. Right, ready? Go! Go, go, go! What do you call a deer with no eyes? No idea. What do you call a deer with no eyes and no legs? Still no idea. You're an idiot. I'm good enough. Have I told you that one before? I've heard it loads. So the last time I spoke to a doctor, I told him my arm was broken in two places. He told me to stop going to them places. It's <laughs> too <laughs> terrible. Tried to catch fog yesterday. By any chance, missed. you missed. <laughs> <laughs> It's a cold, early spring afternoon in Dudley. Craig Alsop and Kai Brooks have just come off their break. Right, let's go. 999. What have we got then, Kai? What's the job? It's a Category 2 call. 69-year-old female. Ill, giddy, can't stand, has head pains and is vomiting. No, it could be anything, couldn't it? The patient, Hannah, called the ambulance. And her daughter, Tracy, rushed to be with her when she heard her mum was unwell. Hello there. What's this lady's name? Hello. Hello, Hannah. All right. I'm Craig. This is Kai. Oh, yeah. Tell us, tell us the story. What's what's going on? Okay. So it's more the pain in your head at the moment, yeah? Okay. So a bit leaning to that one side. Okay. And has that just started today, or has that been going on a bit longer? How's your vision at the moment? Are you finding the room spinning, or is it? So the room's OK at the moment, your vision's normal, but it's when you get to stand up, you're right off kilter, yeah? OK. Hey, Have you ever suffered with vertigo or anything like that before? Anything like that? No? OK. All right. I think what we need to do now is probably stand you up, OK? And we'll just do your blood pressure where you're standing up and see what that's doing. So you just feel completely off balance. Mm -hmm. OK. So you say you've never had any symptoms of tinnitus or anything like that before? OK, no ear infections or anything like that before in the past, no. OK, should we have a little stand then, yeah? We'll give it a go. If it's too much, we'll sit back down. All right, I'll support you. It's not immediately clear what's wrong with Hannah, 
So Craig wants to do further checks. You're all right, I've got you, I've got you. We'll just, let's just try and get this blood pressure then we can sit you back down. Can you try and straighten up? I could straighten up, but I've got you, don't worry. I just feel as I want to go. You're just automatically leaning that way? That way? Okay. Oh, That's goodness. lovely. You sit yourself back. Oh. All right. Oh, right. Yeah. I need the bowl. Bowl, yeah. Bowl. Sorry, mate. You're all right. You're all right. You just be sick. Oh. Get it out of your system. Oh, oh that's just nasty bile, it's that is. Boring, is oh. Vile bile. Oh, yeah, that's it. Was there, right? oh. Mm. Obviously, we saw Hannah was quite unsteady, especially when she was stood up on her feet. It could be something as simple as just a, an ear infection or... Um, vertigo or tinnitus, um, something like that that's affecting her balance. But also those symptoms can also be displayed in a stroke. Um, so you've got to really think along those lines when treating. Hannah, I think, based on everything that we've found, I think it's advisable that we take you to the hospital. You've got something called ataxia, which is like an off-balance, kind of that feeling of going this way. You're vomiting. You've got this sudden onset of, of a headache at the back of your head. There's a risk that it could be like a stroke, like a mini stroke type thing. Worst case scenario, obviously. Yeah, but we've got, to, we've got to go on the basis that it could be this. Do you know what I mean? Worst. Treat for the worst, hope for the best. So the blood tests are the only way that we're going to know for sure. And the only way you're going to have that done is at the hospital. All right. Hannah's husband, Ray, is ready to go with her. But first, Craig wants to try to relieve some of her symptoms. If you, if you feel like you're going to be sick, we can give you an anti-sickness if you want. But it's, it's an injection, that's the only thing. Let's <coughs> so have a little look. Oh, oh, oh. 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 We get you this anti-sickness, oh. we can knock this oh. on the head. Oh. 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 Hi. The pain? Oh, God. Oh. Do you feel dizzy now? Oh. Yeah. Oh. So with this anti-sickness, you need to do it slowly over a couple of minutes. All right, we'll give you this then now, nice and slow, and then we'll, uh, then we'll get you outside, I think, and we'll give you the pain relief on the ambulance, yeah? With the anti-sickness medication taking hold, Hannah is ready to go to hospital. Just carry, mate, if you're happy. But as they transfer her to the ambulance, Kai notices a worrying change. Facial droop. Hannah, can you hear us, sweet, yeah? OK. Say hello, Hannah. No. Say hello. All right. You OK? <laughs> yeah? Hannah developed uh, some fast symptoms, FAST, face, arm, speech and time. Uh, she, her face drooped to the one side, her arm was weak and her speech was slurred. We both realised that it potentially could have been a stroke. Things were becoming more sinister and we needed to act quickly. Anna? Anna? What? All right? Yeah. yeah? Hello? Okay, sweet. Come on, then. Yeah. Let's get you on this chair. Come on. Pause, mate. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We've got the conjugate gaze as well, mate. Do you want to ring up and tell her? Yeah. It's conjugate gaze, fast positive, right sided. Right side, mate. All right, thank you. You still with me, Hannah? Hey. Yeah. Craig and Kai need to get Hannah to hospital as quickly as possible. Her husband Ray is coming with her. How are you feeling, Hannah? All right, how's the head? OK. If she is having a stroke, then prompt treatment could save her life and prevent brain damage. I'm ready, mate. All right, I'm, I'm set it off. Here, let's pop your head forward for me a little bit. That's it. I 
think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. You don't know what? So, yeah, you don't like the way he was, no. no. You've done the right thing ringing us. You know, we we had a few ideas of what it may have been and we hoped that it wasn't anything to do with like a stroke or anything like that. But the way that you are at the moment, it may be a bit of a stroke kind of symptom that you're suffering. So it was the right decision to come with us. Want to put them stickies back on you, all right, Hannah? Let's have a look at your heart rate, because it's going a little bit on the slow side. How slow, Craig? It did drop to like 30 something, but it's just back up now. Craig monitors Hannah carefully. Let's pop this off now, let's see how we go. Can you puff your cheeks up? That's more like it, perfect. For the moment, her symptoms seem to have stabilised. So we think, judging what just happened, you might have had a bit of a mini stroke. Yeah? Your one side of the face was completely drooped. You know that adverse on the telly where you've seen that cause? It was the same as that, yeah? So you went from fast negative to fast positive. Everything else you could move, couldn't you? You just couldn't get your words out. You had a bit of a droop in your face, so that's enough to tick the fast box. The mini stroke can herald a more serious episode, and hospital is the only place where Hannah can be treated properly. But the key is time, isn't it? That's the last piece of the fast. Yeah. Time, getting you there quickly, within four hours of onset, and they can do what they need to do then. Just pulling in now, bro. OK, mate. Thank you. Arrival mode activated. Hi. Face is back to normal, mate. Probably lasted about five minutes, and then it came, she came back. Bit of a bump as we come down, OK. Hannah will now have more detailed tests to try to find out if she suffered some sort of stroke and whether she's at risk of another episode. From time to time, we do go out to people, don't we, that develop symptoms in front of our own eyes, don't they? Um, that weren't there when we first arrived. Yeah. Initially, we were going down the lines of, yes, OK, it might be stroke symptoms would be certainly not an acute onset though. It just shows how, how things change on a job and it goes from being a, a little sick patient to a big sick patient pretty quick, doesn't it? Fair play though, team effort bro. Student paramedic Ash Bolas and paramedic Grant Porter are on their way to their next job. Round the corner we go. Whee! They've been called to an address on the outskirts of Wolverhampton. Oh, I love this. I love this bridge. Up, oh, there we go. <laughs> 
diagnosed epilepsy, no one epileptic having a fit. Arrive the mode 28-year-old Stacy has had an epileptic seizure and fallen at home. Her son Kyle is waiting for the crew. Hello. Hello. Where are we going? Is it up there? Yeah. Up here to the left, is it? Round this one. All right. In the kitchen. Kyle ran for friend and neighbour Jamie when his mum collapsed. Is it Stacey? It is, yes. All right, I'm asked, this is Grant. What's she... happened today? She was over my house earlier. Yeah. But for the last few days, she's been complaining of headaches. She does suffer with epilepsy. Yeah. But she hasn't had a fit for about a year. No, Stace. Her son just came out and ran across to my house and said yeah. he just found her collapsed on the floor. Just on the floor? Yeah. OK. Has she been shaking, though, or just collapsed? Yeah. She had a fit when yeah. I was here. Right. When I get to the hospital, yeah. Yeah. And I've done the, I've tried to do the cup of tea. Yeah. Then. Try over again. And she does. Oh, good collapse. Yeah. Stay. Stay. I just saw. Hello, my love. She's unconscious. Go, go, me a blanket for your mum. Have you got a pillow? Go and get one. Go and grab a blanket and a pillow. Pillow. Oh, it's dopey. Oh, yeah. Stace, and just lift your, <laughs> your head up for me, sweetheart. Just lift your head up for me, sweetheart. Just so I put this pillow there. That's it. That's it, sweetheart. She has food to the brain. Stace, can you talk to us yet? Have you still got a headache? Have you got any pain anywhere? Your head and your neck. Did you have that pain before? Before you fell? Did you fall over? Did you put yourself on the floor? You can't remember. Know. Were you in here when she fell then? Yeah. So did she fall? Stay nice then? and relaxed yeah. for us. Okay. And then you I went and got. Yeah, not like friends. Okay. Okie doke. Even though we'd been called for Stacey's epileptic seizure, we were concerned because she'd had a fall onto a hard surface. She could have uh, suffered neck or spinal damage. Stacey, I'm going to feel your neck. Tell me if it hurts when I'm touching, OK? Sharp. Any pain here? Feel it in the bony bit there? Yeah. Can you grab me? Yeah. A collar? Yeah. A scoop? Scoop. Stretch it. blocks. Yeah. Do you want to go give my yeah. mate a hand? Should we go and get it? Yeah. Good man. Yeah. Right. I'll be back in a second, right. mate. Right. Oh, look, it's snowy. What's your little lad called? Kyle. Kyle. He's a good lad, isn't he? Coming to get the neighbour. Kyle isn't sure what he wants to be when he grows up, but today it's the paramedics who are grabbing his attention. Right. Put that on there. Oh. Put that on that one. What's that? Put that on there. I know what that is to keep your dad. Your dad. <laughs> There's loads, isn't there? Yeah. Right. Tell you what, I'm going to take it out. You hold on tight with it. OK, I'll tell you what, put one of them blankets on. OK? Move it that way. Got it? Yeah. Right. Oh, there we go. Oh. Right, you go up that way. Bit of a push. There. Got it? Yeah. One, two, three. Ooh. And we're up. Right. Can you do take that into my colleague? With help from their new junior trainee, the team can begin the delicate job of getting Stacy onto the board. Right, so what's simply going to happen is we're just going to gently roll you over onto your back, okay? Yeah. That simple. Same simple? Yeah. Okay. So he's got control of your head, so he's going to full control Ashwell and he's just going to tell us what we're doing. All you need to do is just go floppy for us. You all right? Yeah. 
All right, just relax for us, okay? So we're gonna go over to the, onto the back fully, so the left is parallel with the floor. Okay, on move, ready, steady, and move. Nice and slowly, nice and slowly. That's it. Okay, I've got your head, I'm just gonna put your pillow under it. Okay, just relax your head, just relax. That's it. Now she's lying flat, Stacey's injuries can be reassessed. Right, we're just going to have a quick feel. So here? Yeah. There? Yeah, he's just all there, that's right. Yeah, well, this tendon yeah. is where I'm pushing. Warm. You can actually feel the You can see it there, look. She, she pulled it, she's just not she? Is that painful? Yeah. Yeah, there's a bump. Yeah. A little bit of a bump there. There, my thumb is. Right, yeah. Around the front, isn't she? The crew can't rule out a more serious spinal injury, so must keep her as still as possible as they prepare to transfer her to the ambulance. I'm going to take Audrey and just hold it up, OK? Because the last thing you want is your air trapped in this thing. Stacey's eight-year-old son, Kyle, who raised the alarm, is staying with his neighbour while his mum goes to hospital. Bye, little man. See you later. Bye. Kyle really did save the day uh, for an eight-year-old lad he was very switched on and recognised that his mum needed help and quickly. He alerted the neighbour, he helped us um, and he helped his mum in the time of need um, and I'm sure he made his mum very proud that day. When do you last us to eat or drink? Do you reckon? You haven't eaten for two days? How come? Right, OK. That might not have helped today. How's that pain now? Do you want me to stop and give you a bit of paracetamol? Yeah. With another ten minutes to go before they reach A&E, Grant wants to make Stacy as comfortable as possible. Shall I catch my love? Very well done. While they wait for the IV paracetamol to kick in, he tries to figure out what might have triggered Stacey's seizure. Oh, right. That's not advised for you. So I can understand there's a bit of stress going on then. You've been worrying about him. Right then, we're ready to rock and roll. So you've had his all going on then? Yeah. Tell you what, you can't have a quiet minute, can you? Yeah, at least your lad's looking after you. But it's not going to do your dad much good if he's not very well. And you're not eating and drinking, is it? Because it's going to make you do things like this and be poorly. So you've got to keep yourself strong for him, haven't you? At the end of the day. So we need to be a bit more... A bit more on top of that, by the sounds of it. Now the doctors can check Stacey's injuries from the fall. Off you go, and make sure she's not suffering any side effects from her seizure. I'll tell you what, that little one, for eight years old... Fair play to him. Fair play to him. And I'm all for engaging with the little ones because their perception of the ambulance then is that we're not horrible people that come into houses and stab you with needles and everything. Right. Uh, yeah, well, generally, but it's having that perception that they were there to help. Yeah. No, you don't. Yes, I do. My life has been positively dead without you. I'm being serious. <laughs> you look like a corpse. I feel like one. <laughs> it's 
today's quote of the day, love is when the other person's happiness is more important than your own. I'll go with that. That's pretty fair comments, isn't it? I like that one. Well, Ollie, it looks like we're going back for a romantic lunch break. Are you cooking me anything nice? Um. Um. Got half a mould sandwich. Uh, I've got a sandwich I can share with you. Share a sandwich. What's on your sandwich? Ham and cheese. And cucumber as well, I think. Just to add the healthy uh, part in there. It's mid-afternoon, and regular crewmates Laura Hickman and Joe Stevens have just received a call. Poor Stanley, 90-year-old male, fallen with a head injury. Fighting for breath. I bet he's panicking a little bit. Oh, we're only there. Oh, yeah, it's only around the corner. Do you, I always lose wherever we are. I <laughs> do. Look, we'll get to a job and then I'll forget where we are. Where am I? What day is this? I don't know. I was saying earlier, I would fail every single capacity assessment. <laughs> what day is it? I don't know. What's your date of birth? I don't know. Who's the queen? I don't know. Lizzie? <laughs> Just ahead. It's going to be in there, isn't right. it, look? Oh, yeah. Joe and Laura's patient lives in an assisted living residential home. They're independent flats, aren't they? Yeah, independent living. Staff called for help when they weren't able to get 90-year-old Stan up after a fall. Hello, Stan. Oh, anyway, they're not, they're not, they're not, they're not the ball yet. Oh. <laughs> My name's Joe Stan, and this here with me is Laura. Hello, young man. Oh, yeah, hello, young lady. <laughs> this is an old, an old back here. What's happened today, Stan? Well, I just got up from the table. I've been mean, having I mean, a meal. And, and just uh, uh, toppled over. You in any pain at the moment, Stan? No, no, it's a bit, a bit sore around the back of the head. Right. I'm bumping, but I'll be that. Keep nice and still for me a second. I'm just going to have a feel down the back of your neck. OK, tell me if there's any pain where I'm pressing. Keep still. Any pain? No. So, you don't remember going dizzy? No, no, no. No? I think, I, I think I just show my balance. <laughs> do you remember it all, Stan, or do you think you were knocked unconscious? No, no, no. Stan, Laura's just going to shine a light in your eyes. Yeah, oh, I've started yeah, yeah. that going again. Do, do what you need to. All right, so. Beautiful. Since retiring from his job in engineering, Stan's health has gradually declined. This isn't the first time he's fallen. Stan? Yeah. What medical problems have you got? I have a, a dicky heart. There are things, problems there, that it wouldn't be possible to put right. It would be too complicated. Have you had those problems for a long time? Yeah, yeah. Are you on medication for them, Stan? Well, yeah. The, 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 in the kitchen, okay. I can see, I can see medication. a script. Any breathing problems? No. No? no apart from being an old actor and puffing and puffing. Bless you. <laughs> At least she's put a smile on your face. It, it's lovely to have a smile put on my face. Oh, uh, Doesn't happen very often, Stan, I tell you. Especially from a nice charmer like yourself. I'm still not married. I'm an old actor. <laughs> I mean, You're still not married? No, no. Is that no, a proposal, uh, Stan? Nobody will ever me. Trouble is, Stan, I think you haven't found the right woman. <laughs> no. No. I've stopped looking a long time ago. This is what I don't like. You're wasting your girl's time. And it was, it was an old knacker like me. There's people out there that need you. <laughs> You're not wasting our time. You're our priority. You need us at the moment. So that's why we're here. OK? You don't need to worry about wasting our time. I'm not worried about anything, I mean. Good. I gave that up some time ago. <laughs> it's the best way to be, Stan. Laura and Joe want to get Stan upright, but unsure of what his injuries might be, they need to be extremely careful. Okay. So me and Laura will give you a hand, but we'll just sit you onto your bum. If you are in pain, if it hurts, tell us, okay? 
Right, on three, we're going to sit up, OK? One, two, three. Perfect. There we go. <laughs> right, stand. You've had a bump to the head, OK? And on the back of your head, yeah. you've got a bit of a lump. We'll now, you're on some tea. medication no, called warfarin. Warfarin is a blood thinner. It thins your blood. Yes. OK? Yes, I do know that. Yeah, you'd have been put on that for your irregular heart. OK? Now, because you've had a fall and bumped your head, with that medication, it's, it's quite worrying. OK? So we'd like to pop you up the hospital and get you checked out up there. OK? You do what you need to. They're worried his blood thinners put him at risk of a bleed on the brain. Stan, yeah. do you mind if I take a photo of the bump on the back of your head? Don't take the front of the face. <laughs> it is that, that ring on that finger, see, you're smoking for. I have got a lovely partner, yes. Oh, well, it, I am. I'm, I'm wasting my time. <laughs> you never know, Stan. Right, I will leave you to it then. Thank you. You've had no problems having a wee, have you, Stan? No problems having a wee? No, no, no. Not at all. The trouble that I keep thinking that I've got these days is I keep waking up in the morning. For a wee? No. Just waking up. And you're thinking, oh, I'm still here, you know. Of course you am. You want to be here for a lot longer as well. Yeah, well, I'm still here. What, what the hell am I going to do today? What do you do through the day? Do you go out many places? I have a, 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 an electric scooter. Yeah. Before I had that, my life had ended. Being used to being mobile and walking here there and, and doing miles and then not being able to. It was a... Somebody pulled the plug on me. The, the main thing is, it is doing things for yourself or for myself. It helps you stay independent, doesn't it? Oh, that's keeps the word. Your, keeps Indi your independence. Independence. Yeah. It, it, it might be a little word, but it's a big one for it me. It is, of course it is. To me, with Stan, although he was quite a happy and a jovial man on the outside, it wasn't until we got him into the back of the ambulance that you actually realised how lonely he was. Yeah. Um, and how things were affecting him, maybe being on his own, being unmarried. Um, yeah. And then you saw a different side to him. And I think that's the side, although the, the niceness was there and it was a laugh and it was happy, it's that side that actually, like, touch your heart, stays with you. And here I, here I am, way past my sell-by date, and yeah. chatting a young lady like you. <laughs> but, but then I, I've been trying to chat girls up like you all my life, and it's never got me anywhere. Well, it's been that long since I've been chatted up, Stan, I wouldn't know. <laughs> A short journey later, they arrive at the hospital. And I suppose before I lose you girls, there's none of either of you want, want to give me your phone number. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I haven't got a phone. 999, I think that's the only one I know. Stan will now have the bump on his head seen to and be monitored by the doctors in A&E. Oh, he's a lovely Stan when they reckon him. He was. He was a really nice guy. Bit of a flirt for nine, eh? It's a shame there isn't it, because, like, there's probably nothing wrong, but it's that very small percentage. That chance that there is. He's doing well, though, for 90, weren't he? He didn't look it at all. He didn't look 90 at all. It just annoys me when you see those restaurants where they serve you the smallest thing ever, because that doesn't fill you up, does it? No. Stuff in your face it like a Toby Carvery, that fills you up. I like pizza. I like, I love pizza. Thin base, though, not thick. Yeah, I can't have thick. Yeah. Garlic dip. Yeah, yeah, I can go along with that. Oh, God, yeah. 
So that's orgasmic, that is. Yeah, Absolutely it is. fantastic. So what did you eat? I had one medium I Texas barbecue. I had nine pieces of chicken. And I also had, you know, that chocolate pizza they do? Like the in individual size chocolate pizza that's like right, four so slices. Individual, yeah, I think they're made for four people or two people. You're only supposed to have one slice, aren't you, really? Because it's just calorific, isn't I it? I had really? a whole one of those. Do you think you had like two days worth of calories in one meal? I probably had a fortnight's worth of calories in one yeah, meal. Yeah, probably. And to top it off, I had a bottle of fizzy drink as well. Was it uh, Coke Zero? Or it was. Like... Yeah, so at least you. Didn't all that have any... food and then a Coke Zero. Just to kind of balance it all out. Well, you know, you've got to offset it somewhere, haven't you? Of course you have. It's after midnight, and Lee Farley and Nicole McClintock are out on the road. Uh, Nicole, we've got another job come through. We're now going to um, a 54-year-old male. He's complaining of chest pains, palpitations. So he's sat outside William Hill for makers. The patient who has a heart condition is already known to the ambulance service. Clear, clear. Is that a... Waving, waving, yeah. Hello, Paul. Captain. All right. That's all my heart records and everything. Is it? Shall we get you on the ambulance? Well, of course. Let's take you over, sweetheart, and see what's going on. Well, now it's gone. Now it's gone. Boop, 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 boop. I hope it's beating. Where's home for you, Paul? Paul has been in and out of hospital with heart problems. Have a seat, sweetheart. Can I get your coat off just to do some checks? Oh, yeah. Let's put the heat on. Can I open this up? Is this all right? Look, there's my heartbeat from that time. So no, this it, was on the 7th it, of March. It, Paul, Paul, <laughs> let's start from the beginning, chap. So you went into hospital. That's right. When did they yeah. discharge you? Uh, a couple of weeks ago. They took me down to a ward downstairs. Lee needs to work out if Paul is having another cardiac episode or if something else could be behind his symptoms. What's happened tonight, then? Oh, uh, I've been with my girlfriend uh, shouting and everything. Oh, my goodness. You upset me. So a bit of an upset from the girlfriend? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Then my heart went... Explain it to me. Did you just feel pain in your chest? Did yeah, you feel your heart racing? Still there. OK. If we wire you up, then we'll have a look, see what's occurring. So let's pop this in your finger, sweetheart. You've been in the pub tonight, have you? I have not had that much. How much have you had? About you keep that points, relaxed. Let's get these stickers on your arms and legs, sweetheart. No, no, your arms and legs. Oh, sorry. Arms and legs to start with. These legs swelling up. See? Oh, God! There you go. Fine. ACG looks OK. Although the heart trace is clear, Lee isn't willing to leave Paul on the street with his history of cardiac problems. Are you happy for us to pop you back to hospital? Oh, no. It's an emergency department. They've got to see you. All right, then. Sweetheart, let's get these stickers off your chest. I like your accent there. Thanks. You ready? Because it's going to put hey, your hair off. you off. know uh, Eamon Holmes? I know who he is, but I don't know him personally. I met him. Did you? He's from the old part of the world. He is. This is going to rip your, the, the hairs off your chest, all right? <laughs> Nothing there. The crew are now ready to take Paul to hospital. Looking on the monitor, your heart's quite reasonable. Is it good or is yeah, the rate's not bad. I say like, like what? Yeah. Uh, a lot of that can be down to anxiety though. Uh, yeah. Ten minutes later, they arrive. Let's take your seatbelt off then. OK, we've got you a little wheelchair. I'll do you a swap. You have your stick. OK? Paul can now have more in-depth tests 
to make sure he's not having another full-blown cardiac episode. Okay. Jump into the chair then, chap. Can't give you that. What do you think of that ball then? It smelled quite heavily of alcohol. Yeah, he had been drinking, he said he'd been in the pub. I don't think that'll be the last time we meet him either. Well, that's the first I have met him. Yeah, I, I think we're probably going to see him again and again. Yeah. Are you going to be one of those colourful characters that just keeps popping up? Mm. Hannah, who seemed to be having a stroke, was diagnosed with a nasty virus which affected her balance and potentially triggered the other symptoms. She was given fluids and kept in hospital overnight before being discharged home. X-rays showed Stacy had suffered no major injuries in her epileptic seizure. Eight-year-old Kyle continues to keep a watchful eye on his mum. He now wants to be a paramedic when he grows up. 90-year-old Stan, who fell and couldn't get up, was given a scan and had his head wound treated. He was sent home that day with no lasting damage from his fall. Paul, who was picked up in the street suffering from heart pain, spent a night in hospital before being discharged. He remains a regular face down at his local pub. Oh, and we're home. We're an hour late, but we're home.